Okay, let's stop the meeting. Salute the flag, please. <laughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to, to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we, there's only one mic on her camera tonight, so if anybody has to ask any questions, try to make it loud so we can get it on the recording, please. This is the Infrastructure Oversight Committee. Today's February 8th, which just passed at 6.05 p.m., and this meeting is being recorded. All right, uh, Maury, you want to give a membership update and go forward with the minutes? Yeah, the membership um, of this committee is down one because of Bob McCarthy's resignation. He uh, represented the uh, Finance Committee, and so he is gone from this committee. Taking his place will be Lawrence Holsworth. Lawrence actually came to one of our meetings in July, I'm mean, sorry, in October, November, uh, by mistake, but he got interested, and so I talked to the chair of the Finance Committee and, and told him of his interest, and lo and behold, he is going to be the nominee of the uh, Finance Committee, but it's got to be approved with the Finance Committee, come through the Board of Selectmen before it's actually officially approved. Lawrence does plan to be here tonight, but it'll be about a half an hour late due to a family event. Uh, the second thing is approval of the minutes from from last uh, last meeting, which was actually uh, three months ago. I did. I, I did send out copies. Uh, I've reviewed the uh, minutes that were uh, distributed, and I move that we accept the uh, minutes of the meeting from November second. So okay. second. Second. I right, second. Joe. Uh, Joe. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor. Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Yes. And then upcoming meetings, uh, dates and issues. We I think we just settled on March 8th as being our next meeting um, in person here, 6 p.m. That works for everybody? Okay. March 8th. The only, the only um, caveat there is that Jerry Catino has um, ZBA meetings that night, and he, they don't follow a regular schedule. They're as needed, so we'll hope that Jerry can make that one. All right, and maybe uh, double check on the site because if Jackie Jones can make it for that meeting, it may be at the annex. Okay. Go ahead. And why would it be at the annex? Just with bigger room, more people going. We'll, okay. We'll see if the, the headcount's going to be. Okay. Last time we were overflowing, and tonight we got room, so you never know. Got plenty of room, yes. Yep. Okay. So that takes care of organizational business. Okay. Uh, the overview of the short and long term plans for the water soon. Uh, Daler and Hartnett, please. I start, I'm starting. Uh, since, we, since we have all these, uh, maybe one of the things that we should do is uh, introduce Roger. Oh, this is Jackie. You, you scared us. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. Good. Uh, th that's okay. Go ahead with you. Let her give her time to get that. Okay, so we have Roger Fernandez here. He is going to be helping us as project manager um, throughout this project. He uh, couldn't attend tonight, but he's joined us virtually. Um, so far, he's been great to work with. Uh, he's been helping us out with the schedule. He's reviewed the plans. He's had a number of comments and ideas going, going forward with the design of the project. Uh, he's been great to work with. Uh, we look forward to working with him throughout the process. Uh, we really need the help. As far as overseeing the overall project, and uh, glad he's on board. I don't know if you have anything you'd like to put you on the spot and see if you have anything. Oh, oh. That's what else? <laughs> You're mute. Yeah, we could hear him before. Roger, we can't hear you, so I'm going to reset. Right. There you you go. can't hear me? There we go. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes, sir. Oh, okay. But thank, thank you for having me uh, today, uh, everyone. Uh, apologies that I couldn't be there today. I just I traveled with my family a little bit. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, uh, like you said, I look forward to, to working with you guys. Uh, some of the stuff we already got to do is look at some of the grants <coughs> and the deadlines and the applications that have been submitted. The, uh, as uh, Jim said, the uh, the uh, expression of interest for the Masterworks grant. And, uh, we're putting together a overall project uh, schedule that includes some of the milestones for those grants, some of the other things to consider, including town meeting and you know the different votes that 
that one's going to have to consider uh, for upcoming Tommy uh, 24, uh, 2024. So uh, that's something we're working on now, and hopefully that will that uh, that schedule uh, will be really detailed. I think that hopefully that schedule will serve as a, as a template for uh, both uh, the action items and milestones that we're going to have to meet, uh, particularly with the, with the funding. They they all tend to have, um, or they all will have. They don't just tend. They will have uh, milestone dates for contract awards. When you, you know when when you have as soon as you get the grant, how soon after you have to get started. Um, those types of things are going to drive a lot of the schedule, and again, as is um, ultimately town meeting. So, uh, again, thank you very much. I'm you know, here to answer any questions, uh, and I look forward to working with you all. Thank you, Roger. <clears throat> Do you want to have Jackie or? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you ready, Jackie? Or Jackie, you, you need any setup time or anything? Um, we, can, we can put this stuff to go over if you want. You need a few minutes. Um, I'm good to go. I don't know if you have any way I can put this presentation up, or if you have paper copies. Sure. Yeah, we can. We can put it up. Yeah, yeah. I do have paper. Paper copies are good. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, whatever can help. The folks behind you are people that have interest along Route 6, so we might need a couple of extras. Um, I have 15, so probably... All right. Well, you want to try, 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 try tying in just so right. we can have it. This way, uh, Val can record it for people at home, too, in the future. Roger, we may lose you. Okay, if you do, no problem. If we do, we'll catch up with you later. Okay, thank you. Scratch off the manager intro. Oh, yeah. Okay. Should we get over here? Sorry, I don't want to kick here. Okay. So, probably about two years ago, um, SurfEd was asked by the communities of Westport and Dartmouth and Mass DOT to take a look at Route 6 um, in response to some pedestrian fatalities. Um, actually, there were four fatalities out there um, in a very short period of time. Um, so we were tasked to look at safety conditions and just um, how the corridor was operating overall. Um, I'm sure everyone here is very familiar with the stretch of road, um, but we, we looked at it specifically from the Fall River City line to Cross Road in Dartmouth, so all the way through. Um, it's a four-lane road that carries um, some traffic, um, it has a very wide layout, um, and it, it, people drive pretty fast on it, it's, it's a lot of what we found, and it's very hard to get around if you don't have a car. Um, so an overview of our study, we did, um, a data collection phase, we collected a lot of data on the physical layout of the road, um, 
what the traffic conditions were like, uh, what the land use and zoning regulations were. Uh, we looked at crashes. Uh, we looked at um, public transit conditions. Um, and just, just overall how well the traffic flows through the border. Um, we did a round of public engagement where we um, gathered thoughts, concerns, and ideas from community members. Uh, we held two rounds of public meetings. We um, delivered information about the study to every business on the corner. Um, we did surveys and things like that to try to get people's input. Um, and then we took all of that and we did a lot of analysis on um, how can we make the roads safer and meet the needs of all users. Um, and while meeting the goals of the stakeholders, how can we make it friendlier for businesses? Um, a lot of what we heard, which I'll get into a little bit more in the public engagement, is that people wanted it to be safer, but they also wanted it to support local business. That was a very important concern that we heard. Um, and how to propose developments and potential community growth impact the current traffic volumes out there. Um, and um, how would it operate if we made changes to the road? Um, and then we made recommendations, which I'm going to talk about a little bit more, and then um, the next phase after that would be implementation. So again, public engagement. Um, we brought flyers about the, this to every business. Um, you can see them on the side. Um, we have them translated in four languages. Um, and the main themes of what we heard were, can we make the road safer? Can we make it safer for pedestrians um, because of the fatalities out there? Um, can we make it easier for bicycles to get around? Um, we heard a little bit about um, transit waiting conditions. People on the side of the road waiting for transit were concerned <coughs> with how safe they felt. Um, can we help it support and attract small business? And can we make it feel like a village was a, a theme that we heard a lot. Um, so the goal of our study overall was to examine alternatives that improve travel conditions and equity for all users regardless of age, ability, and socioeconomic status, and also build consensus towards a more livable border. Um, again, the safety was a major concern and also showed up pretty heavily in the data. As I said, there were um, four fatalities out there. Two of them were pedestrians. Um, the main themes in the crashes out there were um, curve delineation near the Fall River City Line. There were a number of crashes over there. Um, there was um, issues with speeding. There were lots of incidences of red light running, which we attributed to the signals out there being relatively out of date and not up to current standards, maybe not as visible as they could be. Um, maybe the time is a little bit off. Um, we had a lot of side swipe crashes, um, and then there were a number of crashes at the median openings. The median openings were another thing that people brought up a lot. Um, there's not a lot of guidance on how to use them, and People don't always use them the best way they can, so we came up with recommendations for that too. Um, again, this is that um, curve. If you see all those little dots, I know it's probably pretty hard to see, but all those little dots over there are crashes just on that curve over there. So um, we made recommendations um, to make the curve more visible in the short term and then into the long term, maybe even um, smooth it out a little bit uh, without impacting any neighboring businesses. Um, we looked at the land use out there. Um, all these different colors represent different types of land use out there. There's very varied use on the corridor. There's everything from residential housing to commercial development to industrial use. Um, so that impacted a lot of what we looked at. Um, here's what we did for a build-out analysis. Um, the This is what we thought maybe the corridor could support. Um, we only looked at developing the parcels that weren't currently developed. We didn't look at any reuse of existing parcels, and we couldn't model the exact impacts of what would happen if the sewer came in because it's unknown if that would cause changes to businesses or things like that, and we don't know what the exact zoning changes of something like that would be. But we did take it into consideration. It's very strongly supported um, in our study, but we don't, um, we couldn't model the impacts quite like we wanted to. Um, again, traffic operations. For a four-lane roadway, the lowest, the base volume is generally 25,000 vehicles per day. On average, 
this road sees about 12,000 vehicles per day. And that's pretty steady all through Westport. It ramps up when you get closer to Cross Road. It goes in a short distance, it goes from about 12,000 to almost 25,000 in Dartmouth. But in Westport, it's a pretty steady 12,000. Um, so four lanes is very oversized for the amount of traffic that you have out there, which is, it's a good thing though, because it means that you have a lot of space that you could work with to make the border um, more attractive. You could make it better for bicycles and pedestrians, and you could make it more attractive for businesses that might want to locate here. Um, but the four lanes, even with our um, traffic projections, we didn't quite get even at the bottom of that 25,000 threshold to meet that need for four lanes. Pedestrian, bicycle, and transit. Um, there are only seven crosswalk locations on that entire length, including what goes into Dartmouth. So it's not very frequent safe crossing locations. Um, so we were recommending that that be more frequent, but only where it's needed. So if there's residential on one side and a post office on the other, that would be a good location to put a light. I'm, I'm sorry, not a light. A good location to put a crosswalk, maybe with some sort of protected light to increase safety there. Um, and again, the, um, the the bus stops are located for the majority of the quarter on the side of the road. And out there, there's not a lot protecting the people waiting for the bus from the cars traveling the quarter. So we want to see more separation between um, the people waiting and where they need to catch the bus. Um, here's just a a map showing the existing sidewalk conditions. It's probably very hard to see on that. Hopefully, if you have a paper copy, it's a little bit easier. Um, but there, there's a lot of gaps in the existing network of, for sidewalks. There are some sidewalks out there. The ones that are out there are in bad shape, and they don't necessarily connect to each other. There's lots of bits and bobs, I guess you'd say, of like pieces of sidewalk, but they don't, they're not one continuous network. So, um, I talked a little bit about our recommendations already, but here they all are on one side. We did adjust these a little bit um, based on some comments we received from the town, um, but the main ones were um, make it safer for the people who need to use it, um, everybody, um, including cars, bicycles, pedestrians, transit users, uh, make it more attractive um, through a variety of different treatments um, and add lighting in the dark area but um, not necessarily those big massive overhead lights that you're used to seeing on the side of a highway but more of a village feel um, lower level lighting that wouldn't contribute so much to light pollution um, and then throughout this we put in many things that say um, consider the needs of current businesses while making it attractive for new businesses so we wanted to emphasize that here is some um, sample, oh sorry, these are the existing cross sections out there. So this is like, if you took a slice of the road, this is what you would see out there. So again, the um, one on the left is Westport. So four total lanes, two lanes in each direction, lots of wide open pavement, not a lot of space for pedestrians where there is crosswalk. So this is like, um, kind of, a, this is overhead what it would look like and then uh, um, driving along shot. And then here's what it could look like with two lanes. Um, if, you, if you notice, we still preserve a good chunk of median. We feel like the medians are very important um, to keep traffic separated, keep everybody safe out there um, for maybe potentially being used for some sort of um, sewer or utility conveyance. Um, we did recommend that the median cuts at different locations to provide turns be more structured so that they provide turning lanes and guidance for turning vehicles um, so they're not so wide open and scary feeling. Um, and then there were two curb cut locations that we were recommending closing because it was, some of them you'll notice when you're out there, there's like three in a row and then there's the long space without one. So if you want to put in turning lanes, you would have to close one to make space. Um, so yep, this is what it could look like um, with a two-lane layout. Um, this is what that would look like in person. This is a this is an actual place. And um, if you 
hard to see again, but um, up near that building on the right, there's one of those turning lanes for a median cut. And um, this is what it could look like out there um, if, you, if you seek these changes. Um, we did come up with a number of four lane layouts. Um, if you'll note it, if you'll look, they do require additional land taking on the sides to accommodate all of the things that the two lane options would give you. Um, and they would also still have that wide open feel. So the next step in our study is to review and incorporate all the comments that we receive at meetings such as this one. Um, we want to present this to the public, but we are working with MassDOT. They are developing concept plans for the road of what they um, think would be a good fit based on the feedback we're receiving through this um, to hopefully make a project to improve the entire corridor. It is MassDOT's road, so they would be responsible for any improvements out there. Um, and then we finalize this report and hopefully collaborate to put those um, plans into action and get some change out there. So I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Yeah, Paul, I have Rob Michelle. Uh, when you was talking with the DOT, was there any mention of the storm drain pipe? Um, so they are aware of it. Um, they were at the last stakeholder <coughs> meeting that we had with the city, uh, sorry, with the town, and they do, um, their um, goal is to collaborate. I can't speak to that exact process because I, I don't work for them directly, um, but they were. There's been some inculture? Yes. Um, they are aware of it and they, they, they have a utility section, so the utility section work, work with the town to make sure that everything but they would be responsible for the cost for the sidewalks. The sidewalks, yes. Yeah, right. And that storm drain pipe. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. um, it depends on if the storm drain pipe is for the, the road or a different structure. But well, in a case like that, when they have to, to put up a, a nice, beautiful road, you would want the storm drain pipe. You can control the water from the sidewalks in the road would all end in that storm drain. So if it's their storm drain, then yes, if it's their, if it's accommodating their. Right, I'm going to push a little more towards that issue as they discuss rebuilding rooms. In other words, we're going to change it to a new phase. Let's bring it right up to date, do it right the first time. Okay. Jack, you got a Yeah, Jack, yeah, Maury, May. We talked on the phone. And uh, so this is an infrastructure committee basically designed to uh, get water and sewer built on Route 6. Okay. And so I just wanted to make sure this is in surface planning too, that we might hope, hopefully we will have considerable economic development on Route 6 once water and sewer goes in. Yep. Is that on your radar screen as well? Yes, it is. Um, so four lanes has capacity up to 25,000. It does, it's not up to 25,000, it would actually it could accommodate larger than 25,000. Okay, so it's just that's just the threshold for four lanes. So if we're really optimistic and water and sewer gets all these guys out there to invest in expanded facilities and hire people, uh, and we bring more traffic, and the four lane proposal is probably better than the two lane. Is that correct? I, I wouldn't say that necessarily. You wouldn't say that. No. I think even two lanes could double the traffic, handle the doubling. Yeah, I think two lanes oh, can okay. handle double the traffic. Um, it would depend heavily on what type of business that you came in. A lot of our public outreach, a lot of the documents we removed from the town, they all mentioned that you didn't necessarily want to um, promote large, big box buildings that more small business. Is that would that be? Yeah, a I don't decision? think anybody in Westport wants to have big. I mean, Dartmouth has something. Like that. Yeah. So, so for that, for developments of those size, you're not looking at. <clears throat> yeah. 10,000 vehicles per day. You're looking at a much smaller trip generation. Okay. But if you come up with a, um, a scenario of the types of businesses or a zoning scenario, we'd be mm -hmm. happy to look at the impacts of that as well. We, it's just very hard to model when we don't know what the exact changes would be. Okay. Uh, it's very... Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of different scenarios doing, uh, that might fit the town, like this combination business is being considered. I know planning uh, is thinking about that. We have a business and you have apartments or whatever built within. So and you know, we looked at veteran housing, there's all kinds of different stuff. But yeah, but we're not looking at the big box store type stuff, you're right on that. I know, I think, didn't Mike Rogers was trying to shoot for four lanes, Jackie, do you remember? Was it him that chimed in on that? Um, we've had a lot of push, yes, 
Yeah, a few yeah. people would like to stay, would like to go for, but businesses need to know that there would be some expansion. So, I know some, like the Fair Lake Rainy and stuff, would help us if we were trying to get imaginative with a, with like a bridge type thing, like in front of his business down to, down to White's. It'd be unique, it'd be something people would want to stroll the area. So uh, there's a lot of different stuff on the table, and we need you guys to make sure she, that you caught her point about they have to be less turnarounds if we're going to modify Route 6. Probably not the critical areas. I think you have the addresses there, right, where it's being Yeah, considered. there were just two. There was one. Um, there's one around 1,000 or something, which yeah. might be down here. It, there was one. Proposing taking three out. Yeah. It was one around 1,000. It was one. Um, Near China Bell Restaurant, but there's three right there, right in the row. They're yeah, that's like the less. Line. They're very, very close together. And there was one other spot where there. There is one. Uh, Joe here owns the Amaral Bus, which does a lot of bus loops there. So we'd have to make sure you know, we don't want to lose the bus loop and have. And and they're up for debate too. Yeah. It was just uh, we did a number of traffic counts out there. Those were the lowest volume traffic counts that were also close to other. We wouldn't want to remove anyone's access. Just no, we just need us to be aware so they can. Yeah. Rui, what's your number? 1121. 102? Yeah, 1121. So you have no one past Joe's, and then there's the one up by the Dominic left ball line. Right, okay. Yeah. Okay, so just so everybody knows, and, and, and like Jackie mentioned, too, if we go four lanes, there would have to be a little bit of expansion and land taking. So um, we have to look it over carefully, and I'm, I'm glad you're showing up to meetings so we you get the grip of what's going on. Any other questions for them, yeah? Go ahead, Jim. Uh, hi, Kathy and Jim Wayne. Um, I have several questions. Uh, we're just now starting the uh, discussion with the consultant for rezoning Group 6. Uh, and uh, thinking about how that would fit in, um, he thought that he has done a lot of uh, work in areas where the state road is being redone. And the, their thought is to go with the one lane on each direction, so two lanes, with all the stuff for pedestrians and bicycles and transit. And um, I, I think that if, so the question in my mind is, despite all the input that we give them, what are they likely to do? I mean, are they likely to go just try to fix up the four lanes, or are they going to do something like you just showed us with the, <coughs> with the two lanes and changing the middle aisle? Because uh, that now is like 23 feet. I couldn't really read it. Yeah, it, it averages <coughs> 23 feet. Right. It, so, there's some places where it's wider, and there's a couple places where it's narrower, but for the most part, it's. So, but in the center of that island is a big water aqueduct that was put in. Uh, 90 years ago or so and um it's it's 36 inch big structure i don't know if it meanders or if it's right in the center of all those islands so if they take away some of the islands by making it narrower uh, i don't know if they're going to be able to do that unless they take into account the, the water aqueduct that goes from Lake Nokachuk all the way back to Fall River. Yeah. And it's not used. Um, they would have to determine that in the, in the engineering phase. They'd have to do some investigation of where that is. There's also a concrete base on their Route 6, which makes it very expensive to, um, to, to do. To dig up, right. Yeah, but they are, I can't. Oops. It's okay. <laughs> I can't speak to exactly what MassDOT will do because um, it, it's open right now. They 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 could do a wide variety of things, but they are leaning towards the direction of the two lanes versus the four lanes. Okay. Um, it's a very popular thing what they're doing other places statewide too. Um, so and we're talking about crosswalks and everything, and then the the the, the issue that that I have is that. Uh, where Route 88 goes across, and there's a big interchange, uh, the, for, if you had continuous sidewalks on each side, how do you cross those interchanges safely? They have to. And, or do we? You know, yeah. and, and so, um, and 
when we get to the interchange, do we need four lanes? Or can, it, can the answer be some two lanes and some four lanes? The answer could be some two lanes and some four lanes. Um, the traffic even near the interchange doesn't really support four lanes, but um, if they determined it was needed, that they they'd probably keep the four lanes. <coughs> if that's the wish of the town too, they're they're going to take the town's wait. They they care about public input. They're going to listen to the town what the town wants to. Um, they're not just going to. It's not the same old mass highway. They're different now. They take into account public engagement. They take into account what the towns want. Um, they really do. They do, but they also have design standards that they have to meet. Right. So if they're going to use federal money to fix the road, federal and state money to fix the road, they have to meet certain standards, and those standards require bicycle and pedestrian facilities. And in that case, you're better off going in than going out and impacting people's properties and businesses. So, right. so is, Rob, you got it. Yeah, well, I was going to say, if it went from the, the two lane on each side, and you're referring to four lanes on each side? No, it would be so. One lane on each side. One lane on each side. Sorry, it's confusing. Carrying two lanes, like, in other words, similar to what it is now, I guess. So, two lanes on each side is what you have now. What yep. we're proposing is one lane on each side. One lane on each side? Yes, but there would be plenty of, there is wide shoulders on there for a breakdown lane, yep. and also allow for passing when there's. If you brought that down to a one lane, that would bring into a big traffic jam, so it's. We, we modeled it. We specifically left a breakdown lane in there. It would have space on the side for if there was a car to break down or if there was a just, crash. Just or traveling it like I do now, I would much rather have the two lanes on each side, especially the lights on the end. You know? yeah. They wouldn't change any of the lights. So it wouldn't change the so alignment the lights of the lights. would stay two lanes? The lights would stay two lanes. There would be adequate. Bottom. They'd have to still study this, but there would be adequate right. like approach lanes doing, so it would widen. We're doing 12,000 per day, where Dartmouth is doing 25,000, so that's double Dartmouth. Yeah. And so if we looked at Dartmouth Road and the proposal that we're making for Route 6, would that be the same or only half the traffic? So... It's what's projected, she mentioned earlier. Yeah. yeah. If we project building it out, then they need to address that. And don't forget the four lanes like you're talking about would encroach a little bit on your property and areas because yeah. they've got to put the bike lane. Gotcha, gotcha. And walk on then you would be getting to like eminent domain on the process of property. So that would be a long, long trip to get into. No, the state owns it's a lot of that lane. They own most of it, but there would be some in, in some areas. My dad's place, 924, see what a marker is. There's, yeah. there's, some, there's yeah. some room there. Yeah, we just need to make you aware that there would be some areas. And they own 86 feet. And in, in bigger cities, like this gentleman had asked, you know, when you got to a bridge, how would you get across? Well, what they do in big cities is they build a ramp up over the highway. Now, I don't know if we got that type of foot traffic to do something like that, but that's a very easy solution. They just build a ramp over. It's like going across the uh, New York yeah, State Highway. You walk over the top. Yeah, right now they got the, as you know, they got the markings on the road. That's about it. And yeah. We'd also have to maintain Doc, that. Doc, put up some lighting there where you can press a button and you can walk across. You know, she shuts it down. Shuts just, it down. just so you guys know, Jim Whiten's on Westport Planning Board. He's the CERPED uh, Commissioner, and I'm the the uh, selectman commissioner so we're pretty good at attending meetings and, and jim's been involved a lot almost every meeting he brings up yeah. what he says. i'd like to thank all of you guys no that's fine i'm just letting you know who your yeah. representatives are and yeah, yeah. and he, he brings up a lot of stuff at meetings too more than so, i do so so jackie the other question i have is it was already brought up about stormwater and we're very concerned about stormwater um, in westport especially <coughs> near angeline brook because it goes directly into the Westport River. And right now it is, is hardly uh, treated at all. It just goes directly in. Uh, and I think they have, they're going to have standards that they have to comply to. Uh, they're going to have to go to our Conservation Commission as well to, to be doing any work near the brook. So, but is there any input that we can give that asks for better than what's required. I mean, we can make our recommendations specifically in our study and make them aware that that's what we want. Um, but what it will come down to is the engineering and design phase and their, and their interaction with the Conservation Commission and working with the town. And, and so the, the other related issue is 
storm water that comes off of private property that goes on to the state road is it's not supposed to happen. But we have so many businesses in in residences that were built way before any of these standards or they had any requirement not to do that. What are they going to do about that and what are we going to do about that? Um, you don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a stormwater expert. I'm a transportation planner. Um, stormwater is important, but um, out, outside of my area especially, I can bring it up to MassDOT and see what their response would be. But I, I'm sorry, I can't answer that question. Jackie, do you need us to follow up with the questions to you, or are you, um, how do you want us to handle it? Um, we could we at least send you an email just reminding you what was brought up. Yeah, that would be very and, helpful. And, uh, but is this going to be part of your, it's not part of your official research though, right? This is just a, more of a presentation, correct? Um, this is more of a presentation, but any feedback that you give me tonight would be part of the public engagement process and get included in the study. Great. Yeah. Mr. Chair, I have a couple of questions. On the, uh, Two-lane layout where uh, the, the right of the You guys want to the follow media, along? He's talking about the that. The median is uh, being shrunk from 23 to 12. Uh, where we have these cutovers, uh, do, they, do the islands go away? Do they the left turn pockets that face yeah. one another? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then. How about at the bus stops? Are we going to break the barrier to let the buses get out of the traffic lane? So one of the benefits of having um, the, the layout that we're proposing is that the buses would have room to pull over. And if it's a high volume bus location, there might even be opportunities to do a bus pull out. So like somewhere where the bus could get completely yeah. out of traffic if there's a lot of people that use that stop. Um, and then the they would also have that space on the side from the um, bicycle and pedestrian facilities where they could wait or there might be room for a shelter or um, we did highlight the most used stops in our study and make recommendations for those too. So um, there's, there's a lot more opportunity for protecting transit users with the space. I mean, I, I can see from the, the sections that both the, uh, the shoulder and the, uh, the, the separation barrier to the bike lane, you know, that's, that's 10 feet, that's an, almost enough to get the bus, you know, we still save, save the bus, the bike lane, but it's certainly enough to get the bus out of the travel lane. Yep, and there, there might be opportunities to even cut into it in certain places too. Well, thank you. And I just want to say those um, cross sections are an estimate. Um, they're not engineering, they're, they're planning, so. Be a little bit different when that's here. Jerry, we brought up your concern that people can't see the medians at night. Yeah, so yeah, that's another <laughs> issue. Were yeah. you going to say um, something? Yeah. Um, one of the things I'm concerned about is uh, the timing of things uh, because uh, uh, hopefully these, these improvements, or call improvements, can be happening around the same time because uh, it, it doesn't seem. For example, uh, I'm, I'm looking here, you've got the uh, four-lane layout with meandering curves, and I think that wouldn't really um, go along too well with a sewer line that goes straight. You know? It would follow the, the alignment of the current road. That's just a, that's an example of somewhere else where they did it, and it looks... Okay, it, it would... Uh, it, it it's would... more likely we're going to end up with basically what we have, straight line. Yeah. But I, I know... You, We've also been talking for years about calming the traffic uh, on that road, and I take it that that's what your your aim is by going down to the well, what I call a one lane. Yeah, and uh, a one lane. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, so I think that's an important thing. But what I'm getting at is that I'd hate to see us tear up the road for, for sewer and or water, and then come up and tear the road up again to. To, to make it the way you're, you're talking about. So how can we see to it? I mean, these are separate entities that have pipe first down. How can we do it so that it plans together? So Mass COT, when you use um, the funding that would likely be used to fix this, they have a five-year hiatus after they right. do their work that you can't touch the roads. So you would have to do your sewer improvements before their roadway project. 
which comes first. Yeah, this, no, it definitely has to be sewer. It would have to be the sewer. sewer. Um, <coughs> the oh, yeah. Massot would likely phase this project. Any other you? Oh. They, they would phase it. They would likely phase the project. Yeah, their current priorities are that um, that section from the Fall River Sea Line to Sanford Road because of all the crashes <coughs> that have been happening there. And also, um, it, it, it makes sense for them where they would start and then they'd probably phase out after that. So I don't know if that helps in the planning for the sewer at all. Okay, uh, Annie and then Roy, yeah. yes. So would, would there be a way that we could get Mass Highway to come in sooner than later and speak with us in regards to this? Because, I mean, the sewer that we're, we're presently pretty close to going to them for permitting what we're doing. So we have to get a permit from them for permission to do what we're doing. And as, as you know, Sammy said in the audience, pipe first. I mean, when you build a road, you always put sewer. Then you, then you do drainage, then you do the water. Mm -hmm. So, no, it's not working. So it's the, not, the, the drainage, you know, like, like the chairman from the planning board said, you know, Mass Highway, when they built this road, you know, all these EPA things that we have to do for stormwater were non existent. So now when they're going to rebuild the road, they also have to follow EPA guidelines. So I, I think since we're already so deep into this project, it would be a good idea if we could get Mass Highway in here to speak with us and so we can try to mesh our projects together. Um, I have spoken with one of the engineers on the Dartmouth project with the sidewalk and he did tell me that they pulled paving out of that section in the contract because they were looking <coughs> to reconstruct the road with the concrete, which is, is also a good thing for us. If we could coordinate what we're doing, the cost for sure us would be a lot different. Sure. And, I, and I just think we're already so far we haven't we sat at the same table. Um, I can't speak to as if they would, but you can always ask. Um, they are very accommodating. Usually Pam has in order to help us out. Yeah, they, they have been at all the stakeholder meetings. They, they're very invested in this process. They are aware of the sewer project. Um, it came up at the last stakeholder meeting. There was quite a lot of conversation about it. Um, we can ask. And yet yeah, Pam has and probably be a Yeah, we can try to get it. I mean, I think yeah. conservation-wise, too, uh, the wind is broken. We're pretty concerned about our river and our research resource. We get the DEP with all this stuff coming up. I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure the DEP is pressuring Mass Highway to do things too. So it's like we could know what's going on on that end. That would help us and instead of just getting blindsided with them. We send them a permit application, or they come to conservation. They are very, very early on in their design process, and they are not programmed for funding. For any projects on Route 6 yet. So, um, and they would take into consideration the timing of your projects as well. So Roger and Jim, they don't want to. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Roy? Roy Cadero. So, the question is is, is uh, Route 6 compliant? So, because we always, we've heard for a while that Route 6 needed to be compliant and they were going to dig it up and they were going to, they had planned it the last time. Are they, are they like, is it is it within compliance right now? Compliance to which standards? Uh, to, I don't know, to a state standard. For the way the way it sits right now. Um, the roadway with the concrete the roadway. shaved and stuff. Mm -hmm. Does it meet current? It doesn't meet current standards. I don't believe that way, right? Yeah. And, and do they have any idea? Like like if they like Manny said, are they planning on coming into a route six? Where I'm, I'm sure we're not going to take the brunt of the whole project. Mm -hmm. We're going to take the brunt of water and sewer going down Route yeah. 6. The roadway would be their responsibility. So with this with this project that we're, that we're trying to deal with, would that maybe be an alarm? And then inside the, the state side, it's time for us to maybe put this road in compliance? Yeah, I mean, they, they've hired an engineer to do some initial design steps on it. They have initiated a project. It doesn't have any start and end limits necessarily yet. A design project through MassDOT is probably 10 years. So, um, it, it, it's best if you work in conjunction with them. Um, but it sounds like the timing <clears> will work <throat> out, and you definitely want the sewer in before the road. Like they just did, uh, Dartmouth all the sidewalks all the way up, um, Dartmouth, yeah, the, 
We did the highway, what, 10 years ago? We did Route 6 10 years yeah, ago, they, and they told us it was a seven-year span. Yeah, they, they claimed it, but no. we don't have No, 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 I'm saying we did the whole stretch all the way to the line, and we were told when we did it, if we wanted to do anything, we had we couldn't, they wouldn't touch again for seven years. Yeah. The sidewalk? Now, if, yeah, anything we wanted to add, we had to do it then, because they wouldn't rip it up again. They didn't want utilities or anything playing on it. So now, that's why we want to do the pipe first, and then we can play with the roadway. Uh, obviously, you don't want it to be the opposite. But, uh, the, you know, the uh, east side of Route 6, I mean, there's no sidewalks there. Yeah, I well, mean, that's, what, that's what she mentioned. This is, that, state, Jackie's actually, putting it all together. It's actually yeah. dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. That, um, that section of sidewalk in Dartmouth went in through like a special project that Mass DOT had to address pedestrian deaths. fatalities. Yeah. 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 And the west side, place. they don't take care of it. They don't cut the grass. Yeah. Rui cuts the grass for you guys on Route 6. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't say for you guys, she's for Serpent, not for Mass DOT. <laughs> she's just the planner. All right, any other questions for her? Uh, yeah, Go ahead, Robbie. Uh, but usually, uh, if you speak to some of the mechanics out in the field, they'll tell you that the storm drain, the sewer, and that water line can go in the same exact trench. As a matter of fact, they prepare to do, you know, prefer to do it that way. They give you a better price on a project. But it looks like we'd have to tie into the DOT. Uh, the one's going to be handling the sidewalks in that storm drain pipe. So in some fashion, like Stevie had said, maybe we ought to just go ahead and get the sewer and water down there, right? When the state comes in to do their gig, right, they're going to go ahead and add that third pipe a foot or two over from where those other ones are. So to keep us on process going forward, maybe we we'll just go ahead with that sewer and water and get that pumped in. Afterwards, of course, the state's going to come down. They're going to do either their two lane or their four lane. And at that point there, they're going to go ahead and ramp and uh, bring it right up to speed. Well, that's why we've got to make sure the town supports it first, because that's some of that's our dime, the state highways, uh, yeah. the state's dime. So that's why we want to get our act together, make sure people are going to vote for it, and then we, yeah. can, we can do our thing. Bob, do you, um, you guys figure yet, is it going on the east side of the Route 6, or we haven't figured that out? Is it dead center, or I thought it was going to go more on the east, going for the corner of Wakes, the, the line? The, the, the line is in the right along the shoulder of the median on the, and, and it, it, it crosses, but most of it is is on the, the westbound lane. Yeah, and heading toward Florida. So the east side, if you're looking toward Dartmouth, correct. Yeah, yeah and the, so, so the passing lane, right? Yeah, it's, 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 it's near the median, the passing lane, then it comes down the corner. Almost the center. Yeah. Because it's, we have to keep separation from the existing water mains that are in there. The gas is all the way on the, the, the gas is side. in there. So there's there's a there's a complete detailed survey of the whole thing. We we've, we've got borings and the, the design is is really quite advanced. Great. All right. Just, uh, to check uh, <clears throat> just on that. I mean that might be a, a benefit to Mass Highway also. The work that we've done. It's, yeah. Uh, uh, Jerry, and then I got a couple more on there. As far as the uh, traffic calming, uh, I know you can't determine what uh, Mass Highway is going to do, but uh, it seems that Westport through 6 and Dartmouth through 6 are very similar. And uh, uh, is it likely that they would, uh, Mass Highway, uh, coordinate it so that the Westport uh, configuration would be similar to what they plan to do in Dartmouth up to Cross Road? Yeah, it would likely probably stop maybe around Reed Road um, okay. because that's where it starts to go up in volume, yeah. Yeah. but yeah, the, that's what our recommendation is. And it would tie yeah. in together. And the other end would be more like for urban. You stay one lane around the corner so people <clears> can, <throat> can walk across and then split up before you get to the rock and stuff. Somebody had their hand, a couple yeah. of had hand up. Uh, Jeff and then the town planner. Hi, Jeff Abrams. On the two or four lane, if we're cutting the median and thinning that out, will the brakes be just one side of turns? No, so they'll have turning pockets. So instead of like just turning into them like this, you would turn like when you um, like when a turning lane on so at an intersection, you know, we've those yep. left turn pockets. So it would be something like that. So it would be a lot more controlled. So you'd be able to turn both east and west, yeah. the same break. Yep, and they'd have better signage and lighting and would let people know what they're supposed to do with them. So. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> All right, Tom Planner, Michael. Does MassDOT have a timeline for coming to a determination on which cross section they might choose? Because we're going through this rezoning initiative and that could potentially impact which land uses we consider. Um, 
for particularly I'm thinking for commercial and maybe industrial uses. I'm not sure exactly of their timeline. Um, they do, they will have alternatives. They won't just come in with one set. They'll have a couple mm -hmm. of options. Um, I, I'm not sure where they are on that, but I can ask and let them know about your initiative too. Okay. Great. Uh, in the back and then Jim. <clears throat> Uh, my name is Jake Correa. Um, I have property on 1033 State Road um, near Amaral Bus Station. The corner of my property, there's uh, for the turnaround, a lot of commercial trucks and tractor trailers. They pull onto my property to make the turn. And so, if we shorten the um, median and things like that, how are those oversized vehicles going to make the turn? They need to look at that in the in the design. They shouldn't be pulling on the property to make that turn anyway. So maybe it's making a more appropriate truck-sized turn somewhere mm -hmm. in that vicinity. Um, but that's very good to know. Um, I don't have a problem with it. It's just I have, I also have a like a, an oversized pickup that I need four lanes to make a, a U-turn, just because the truck's so long. We mm -hmm. have these buses try to yeah. these tractor trailers try to turn around on Route Six. If they yeah, so they, they use something called a truck turning radius when they design a road that they make sure that they can fit a truck. Like okay. A, yeah, a tractor trailer when they design trucks. But that's taken, it's going to be taken into account when they when change they the lanes or whatever they decide to do? Yeah. Okay. Jackie, that would probably uh, be expansion with the four lane, but even with the two lane, would they help the truck, uh, trucks, you know? Even with the two lanes, so the two lanes will still have Space. Shoulders. Yeah. It's still, it the still car have, now, it wouldn't be expanded. I don't think so. They'd still be able to have a swing there. They will have. There will be a breakdown lane, and there are. There's an extra like two feet in the middle too that doesn't currently yeah, exist. Yeah, okay. okay. So it's, it's going to be a. It's okay. going to, yeah, it might. I don't know if it'll be more pavement room, but it will be like more um, well designed and better designed turns as well. Okay. So. All right. Let me have the, got, uh, okay. Manny and then Jim. I mean, because you had said they'll, they'll lay out 80 feet. 86. 86 feet. So they're going to they're gonna be, like, to the public, they're going to be building the, the road smaller and narrow, but when it gets to these areas, they're going to still utilize that whole that space. 86 feet, and it's going to be a better transition into a corner. And We're also not um, proposing any changes to any of the intersections except to add a turn lane in Dartmouth. Right. So they would still have the same, and they would still need to kind of widen and adjust to meet the cross-section of those locations, too. All right, we'll let Jim White and wrap it up. Okay, uh, so <coughs> what's the next step? So you, you've made your recommendations to MassDOT after hearing from us um, um. and the stakeholders. Uh, so they're working on it. Uh, you say it can take a long time. So what happens next? Do they come back to you where they propose to come back to us and say this is what they're proposing? Or do they just say this is it? The, the next step in the plan is to, um, they're working on concept plans and we're going to work with them to bring the concept plans to the town and the public to let the public weigh in on what they think of them. So we have more time to give them our response after they show us what they think. Yes, and their their plans would be more detailed and show you more spot specific. Good. Right. Good. Everybody got most of their answers and got updated. All right, thank you very much, Jackie, for coming down. I really, really appreciate it. I apologize again for the target. That's okay. You scared me. So ignore the email I sent you. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, you guys going to be ready to move on the other stuff? Just keep things rocking and rolling here? Thanks again, Jay. Um, so as he sets back up, we're going to go over the some of the plans.
to, to do the briefing in summary on the, on where we are. And, and just looking at the boards, there's a blow up of the, the board on the left is a blow up of uh, what we call phase 1A, which is which is the first the first piece that's necessary. So just in in, in a general overview, the uh, all, all of the all of the sewage in the water has to come from Fall River. That's where the supply is. They have capacity in their wastewater treatment plant. They have a great deal of excess capacity in their water. So we, if we've got to connect, make a connection to them, it's going to be at the Fall River end. So, um, and, and we've looked at the possibility of preparing three construction each of the contracts is phase 1A, and, and I, I, don't, I don't recall how we got all mixed up in the numbers. Instead of 1, 2, and 3, we got 1C1 and 1C2, but there are three, there are three potential contracts. And in each of those contracts ends at a pumping station. So uh, the, one of the bad news of, of all of this, of, of providing sewers in, in Northwestport, is uh, the, the high point is at Santa Road. So that's the break between the water that's flowing into, uh, into Mount Hope Bay, into, uh, into the, the Tupper Pond, and then down through Fall River, and then anything that's to the east of that is flowing into the West Fork River. So we've got to get up over that hump in uh, Santa Road. So that requires pumping, and, um, and so we've looked at contracts that will end at each potential pumping station so we can buy it up. And, and we have uh, been in, in contact and in discussions with the owners. We have pumping of, of potential pumping station sites. Um, and we have... Um, uh, the engineering design, the surveys, borings, all the design work is very advanced. We could have contracts ready to build probably by March of this year. So next month we, we could have contract documents ready to put out to bid. Um, we also need to get all of the permits and approvals for from Mascot to put a sewer in there and water in there. Um, in their right of way, there's, we cross Brooks and we got, you, you all know the, the section where there were wet spots right along the side of the high, highway. There's Conservation Commission. We've already filed for a, a, a state permit called an interbasin transfer. That is, we're taking um, water, or we could be taking water that originates if you have a well in the Westport River, and we're going to tie it into a sewer that goes to another basin. That's an interbasin transfer. We've already filed for that that permit. That permit is sitting at the state and should be uh, wrapped up. Uh, and we've had favorable discussions with them about is this a big deal or a small deal, and, and we think that uh, essentially is this is this project developed. Essentially, we'll be eventually taking wood, Fall River water, and putting it back in Fall River, so it really doesn't right. in the future doesn't constitute a, a transfer. That is, it'll be primarily Fall River water going back to Fall River. So, this is this is. Uh, let me just sort of give you the, the you know, standing in your way, and standing with my back to the camera. <laughs> So here are the, here are the ponds, um, here's the narrows, um, and we're talking about uh, everything that you see in the darker color is the proposed service area. So we're, we're now in talking to the LaFayette family that owns you know, the, both whites and the hotels. Uh, they also own pieces that are on this side of the road 
and we're looking at a pumping station in this location that's, that's in a, a very underutilized piece. It's the, the piece that has the big uh, 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 billboard on it. Um, and, and we've discussed that with them. And in, in that, all of the wastewater here would come down from the high point by gravity, go into the pumping station, and pumped into an existing force main uh, that goes to there. They are now connected to Fall River and our system would then pick them up and relieve them of having to continue to run their own private pumping station. So this first phase ends in the middle of the and this is one section as all this light green stuff is all that wet stuff where ADA comes through. So you think where ADA comes through? This is a very long section in which is it's either the highway right away, that is there's not going to be any buildings there, or it's or it's wet areas on either side that are not not easy to build. So what we're planning to do in this section is just have a, a force main from this section run through There'll be, there'll be sewers wherever there's development area, and then sewers all the way down here. So this, this plan in the construction drawings will go right through this entire area, and that'll put in the spine of a system, that a system eventually will have sewer and water where, right now, the, the water extends just beyond Davis Road, so just where, where CBS is, the water extends a little bit beyond there. So once, once we move, when we move into construction here, we will extend the water at the same time. So when we dig up the road, you know, the, you know in the future, Northwest Port will have public water and public sewer for these for this area, that's that's the plan. And so, all of this is designed to carry all of the dark shaded area. And we reach back around the, the pond, all of the small lots on the pond. Eventually, protect the all, all of that would all of that would come into the sewer and go there. So, that's the long-term plan. And. You know, if, if someone has their checkbook for 60 or 70 million dollars, I'm, I'm ready to build whatever you want. <laughs> so that's, and, 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 and that's, that's the order of magnitude. And, and you know, it isn't, um, I gotta have a check for 60, 60 million bucks to do it this week. This, this is a plan that we build over 15 to 20 years. If you've thought of a, a programming of providing water and wastewater to, to particularly the homes and businesses here in Northwest Port, you know, it's, it's building into a program that's a long-term program of, of, of thinking of, of doing, you know, con contracts, you know, in that order of magnitude of four or five million dollars a year of continuing building program. And we would seek grants, aids, all that kind of stuff. We can do small bites. That is, we can do a logical bite to, to do this, that piece. That's around $8 million. If we, if we did a bite that was one and two, that pushes us to about 22 million. And if we did all the way to just short of the, the Dartmouth line, um, that pushes us probably into the $32 million kind of thing. Um, and, then, and then over a long period of connecting all the streets and waters in here, that in, in today's dollars, that's a 60 or $70 million undertaking, a long-term program of, of, of building that up. So that's, that's the picture. What we're actually doing is is we've got all the contract arms done for this, 
And all of that came out of the federal recovery money, the ACA money. So, so the taxpayers haven't paid for any of the design work or anything yet. That all came out of the federal money. And, but the, the next step, we're, we're going to try and pursue federal money, is particularly what there's the infrastructure bill and all of those kind of bills sitting there. Now, we, we applied for a grant to do this first um, section last year and, and got denied. And we got denied because there are really no businesses ready to go forward. And so we said, you know, we, we applied, the project is applicable, there's money there. And they said, no, we, those monies that we were pursuing were meant to unlock real business opportunities. And they said, you, you've got to have people ready to build. And we said, well, you know, we have, we have people that have needs. And I know the, the meat works folks are, are pumping their tank every day. I mean, this, this, and, and some of you own businesses here that, that, that certainly could, could benefit from having the sewers available. And, and we don't, uh, you know, the real selling doesn't, take place until the customer says no. So, so the fact that they rejected us, we have, as, as Roger said earlier, we've, we've gone back into the same MassWorks grant again and, and reinforced it. We're getting, uh, we're getting letters from, uh, from businesses to, to reinforce all of that. We also now have, in, in addition to having, you know, someone to help uh, Jim, you know, manage this project. We now have a, t a full time town planner. So we've, we've got the ability to write grants and applications. <coughs> so the plan is we've already filed a letter of interest to go back in chasing one part of money. In June of this year, we will go in probably for this, this, at least this first two sections to apply for state revolving fund monies. And, and to look at if we can put this, while this, this big pot of federal money is now available, that we would get it, reach in to see if we can catch all this stuff. And then at least put together for the, for the businesses, this is our, our business zone, you know, for the businesses here, at least put in the spine of the system. So that's, that's, the, that's the, big, the big picture, the big plan, this is, this would be the beneficial area, and um, you know the the big problem is it's a it's a big number. We we need to think about how we would more effectively put this together. Once we have contracts by probably by um, in, in this fiscal year, that is before the end of June. We will have all of this designed and all the permits ready to build. So um, when we're at that status, the only missing link then is the money. And, and, uh, you know, and perhaps it's, you know, perhaps it's, a, that's his job. Um, and, and so perhaps, you know, perhaps it's, it's more than, you know, putting grant applications in. Maybe it's that we actually get on a plane and fly to Washington and, and talk to folks about uh, you know, what, what we need to do here. And one of the other drivers that, that's really critically important here is, is that, uh, I, I, I don't know if you're all aware of it, but you know that they're changing, DEP is changing the Title V regulations. And that, and that Westport, it, it'll take a couple of years for it to kick in for us, but when it kicks in for, it'll, when they adopt the new regulations, it'll kick in immediately on the cake, and then it'll kick in shortly after that for us once they designate this as a nitrogen sensitive area, which they will. So every one of those little boxes that you see, of your homes and businesses, you have to have a denitrifying septic system, and you have to you know, put put in the maximum feasible compliance. Those systems 
require annual reporting for about a thousand bucks a, a month, and and depending on you know what numbers you believe, um, those things are each upgrade is in the twenty-five to thirty-five thousand dollars each. If you said, okay, how many homes and businesses are up here? <laughs> you know, there's, there's you know, three, 25. Three, there's, there's, there's 3,000 up here. So if you look at $60 million, that's if the town worked over a long period with, with state monies, some local share that the town wide would be betterments to the people who get the sewer water, there'll be betterment charges. So if you look at all that, in, in today's dollars, maybe that's 60, 70 million dollars. If you look at, when they adopt these regulations, if everyone had to, and they get this five year horizon to, to do the upgrades, what, what, what's the value of that? Okay, sure. so the town, the town does nothing, what, what do, what do the, the, the people who live here, the people who run their businesses, come? that's about a hundred and ten to a hundred and forty million dollars that someone would reach in their pocket for. So the idea of advancing a state, advancing the town's plan, so you can go to DEP and say, you know, you're not going to enforce, I mean, the, the enforcement mechanism mechanism really isn't, they're going to send a state trooper to your house and see if you get a septic system, right? It's, the, tri the trigger is transfers, or if you have to finance, or you have to refinance your mortgage, and then someone's going to have to, not the kind of inspections you get now, where if someone comes out and looks in your D-box to see whether it's flooded, someone's going to have to provide you know, that you have a certified denitrifying system. And you know, that's going to be a yes or no, and that's the trigger on, on selling your property, getting a mortgage, all those kinds of things. The answer is, the, the town will have this as a plan, and if we adopt what, what they call a water shed management term, if we adopt that plan, then, then the town makes the commitment to doing this. And then the town, that takes to, takes the people off the hook as long as the town delivers on the commitment. So, the big scheme, 15, 20 years, 60, 70 million dollars. You know, ready to go bites, you know, 8, 20, 30. We'll have all that. Uh, all of those designs and contract documents will be ready now. That is, by the end of March, they'll be ready. Probably all the permits will be in hand by the end of June. And so, if, if we had the money, we could put these things up to bid. And our plan is to apply for grants and loans, continue to apply this year, and then so if we if we start to get these grants and there'll there'll be a local share. So it is it is Uncle Sam is not going to give you a hundred percent of the money. So whatever share they, they give, then we will our plan is to go to the town meeting. Someone someone's likely to say yes to these applications. Once we say yes to the application our plan is to go to the town meeting in 2024, not this coming town meeting, but the next town meeting, and say, okay, we've got it all permitted, we've got, uh, we've got a grant, we've, this is how much money we have, this is how much money we need, and to look at that combination of, of state and federal monies, the local share money, and the betterment money, can we cobble together uh, a an economic plan or a financing plan to actually build these sections. So that's that's uh, the summary of sort of a year's <coughs> worth of work, uh, more than a year's <coughs> worth of work, and a lot of planning. But it's it, it's all doable. It isn't just talk. You know, I mean, in in a couple of months, you you won't be able to 
the, only the, the, the stronger of you, all of you are stronger than I am, but all the, the strongest of you will be able to carry the contract documents. <laughs> uh, let Murray say something else. Yeah, I um, wanted to um, just ask you all a favor uh, because we did put quickly in the Mass Works grant um, application last year and it didn't work. And the primary reason it didn't work is because we couldn't prove, we didn't have any uh, substantiation of the fact that if we put the, the sewer in, that we will have expansion investment and new jobs. And, you know, I know that Andy Burns at Meatworks has been talking about, you know, he wants to expand. He was thinking of 1,700 animals slaughtered every year. He's annualizing 2,500 animals every year now. And he can expand beyond that because we... We're, we're getting animals from Rhode Island, we're getting them from Martha's Vineyard, we're getting them from obviously the South Coast. So, there's a, I asked him to write us a letter, to you actually, um, talking about the money and the jobs that he would invest in creating. And so what I'm going to ask you all, as Route 6 property owners and businessmen, is to, if you have expansion plans that would be enhanced by the sewer going through for Mass Works, and this is Phase 1A, this is just the, the first little part from Fall River to uh, 88. But if you have them, please talk to Manny or Joe, because I think Manny, between you two, you know all those guys. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we want to try to find out if you have concrete plans, if you get sewer, to invest in expanded facilities and create new jobs. Okay, end of speech. That will help us. Mm -hmm. All right, back to David Rogers. If we <coughs> If we do this plan the way you're talking about that green area, that dark green area, does everybody else in the town still have to do denitrification to all the other homes? Uh, or does that take us out of that sensitive area? Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, I know exactly what you're saying. And, uh, and the, the, the answer is, um, if, if we adopted a water management plan, once we do that, then all we have to do is to is to sh to show that we're reducing the nitrogen flow into the river. The biggest single nitrogen contribution we have comes down Bread and Cheese Brook from the, the homes that are in probably the second phase. Right. Mm -hmm. So the the plan would be we adopt a water management plan for the entire town. Those. And, and we're already doing a bunch of things. The, the, the planning board and the board of health are working together. There's a requirement now for all new construction to have denitrifying de 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 stations. So the new homes that are getting built are not adding to the to the river load, or they're not adding much to the river load. Where we have a sunset provision on cesspools now that people are going to have to do some accommodation for that. All of that reduces the load. And if we tied this portion of the town to Fall River, we think we will meet the nitrogen limitations in the river. And we already studied that three three years ago. We have a we have a model of of what these loads are. Taking this load out probably makes it. The West Branch we already, the last two years, we've already met the nitrogen limit in the river and the, and the West Branch, and we're, 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 we're still over the limit on the East Branch, but we're close. Taking the bread and cheese uh, load out of the river probably makes it. So if we, if we did this, it, it probably takes the, the, the the, uh, once we once we sign on to the management plan, then it takes the demand off of everyone in the town, including people in the service area. Once we do the service area, we're probably going to meet the water quality limits in the road, and then the, the rest of the town doesn't have to go in and do the upgrades. So right. that's our plan. It's right. it's just a big selling point to the south end. Just yeah. If we get up this end done. We're going to stop everybody from having an upgrade. Yeah, so at, come five, ten years, whatever, they're going to make the whole town do it. So, no, we, and, and, and you know, those, those of us who have been working on this, we're really sensitive to about there's a public, there's a, a broad public interest in, in 
you know, it, the, the whole town <coughs> contributing to this piece of sewer in the north end, even if the sewer doesn't reach it still you, benefits them. Yeah. you know, that, that we're all under the risk of this nitrogen, uh, you know, this, this upgrade requirement. And if you look at the, the collective cost to everybody of, of reaching in your pocket for 30,000 bucks, you know, soaring this is, is cheap by comparison. In these denitrification systems, they reduce the nitrogen going from the septic system. The sewer eliminates it. So right. yeah. There's a significant right. difference between putting a denite system in for a residential property and eliminating it completely the sewer. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, here in uh, Massachusetts, in most commonly areas around, only 18% of the homes have septic systems. Most of them are already tied into water and sewer. And when you look at the overflow going into the Grand <coughs> Cheesebrook, that's really the flow from the streets. I don't know if anyone could really bet it's from someone's septic system or somebody. Oh, I know it's from the septic systems because I, I go for a walk down the street and that's all I smell. Right. I know it's septic. Yeah, it's a mix. It's a, it's a mix. Yeah, it's a mix. Yeah, the, the, a bridges, the bridges are draining to the Bread and Cheese Brook. That's what's overflowing it out into the streets. So yeah. they want to post, uh, uh, you know, what you should have, what you shouldn't have in your septic and your drinking water. But at the same time, they'd like to have an open river running straight to the East Bridge, you know. Yeah, we're just saying that's why you can't shellfish when it's heavy rain because all yeah, one inch, yep, outside. Exactly. So that's there, there of course. Plenty, you know. You know, we, we all live in town. And you think about how many wet backyards are on during the springtime. <laughs> Did you have any more to add on the D night? We call it. I, I, I think we're just getting some drink water. All right, we're trying to wrap it up. With, Keep yeah, it interesting for a while. Do we have anything else? On, nothing on the 48 hours, right? What else? He, he, um, no. Bob touched base on everything. So. Did he touch base on the funding? The latest funding? He, was well, it was there was is there board. anything other besides MassWorks and funding? But you, we're, we're, we're going to apply for the USDA. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. State revolving fund. Or? The, 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 the state revolving funds are what we're going to apply for this year. Uh, the, the difficulty of the USDA and agricultural funds is the sound of the Italian guys, just hang on. We're going to be wrapping up soon. He's, he's explaining what we're, what we're applying for for funds, so you guys get understand. Okay, so we're, we're we're going to all of the. Programs that are generally available to us, we're going to apply. We've, we've explored things like uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture funds, all the other funds. Some of them are very complicated, in which you have to form districts. They have limits on you can't. They they don't they don't provide money to towns that are greater than 10,000 people. So we're 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 looking at, at all we have looked at, and we will continue to look at all the avenues. And one of the things that Roger's doing is. Is, is just with, with Jim, just looking at, in addition to the permitting and the schedule stuff, um, what are all the opportunities for, for, for grants and loans? So we're, we're looking at everything that we can, that we can possibly apply. Rui, are we, uh, are we shovel ready? Because I know that was one of the- You're gonna get the permits in one right? I would say by June, you will be shovel, shovel ready. It, they applied for the, like he said, they did the continental permit or whatever it is. And is that all three, three, all just the first? All three, all three. All three? three. All the permits. Thank you. So we're getting all the, we'll, we'll have all the design done at the end of next month, and by the end of June, we'll have all the permits for all three contracts. Thank you. All right, anybody else? Jerry. Yeah, just a point uh, away from the sewer, but, but related. Uh, Ongoing now is a, the uh, a rezoning uh, effort to the whole thing. So my question to the planning board folks: uh, What time, kind of time frame will these folks start to be able to put their input to the to the rezoning? Uh, you're going to have hearings and so forth, uh, but I think that's a big deal for them. For what these folks are going to have to do. Yeah, Jerry, uh, we've had our first meeting with uh, Russ from BRC Group, uh, and uh, the next one will be start the work, and then there'll be some public input. So six months. 
I think it would be done with it. <laughs> the rezoning initiative will be done by probably fall of this year, and then it would then go to town meeting 2024 for adoption of the rezoning. Um, you know, you could anticipate that that would have a substantial impact on on that whole area, right? On, on everything. Mm -hmm. So, so, uh, the so design I, of the I, road I would just suggest that you all stay on top of that and really put your input to it. So, I think that's part of the contract and the process, right? Public yeah. engagement, yes. public, yeah. public meetings. Yeah, so there will be a, a full public uh, engagement process with that. There will be multiple uh, public meetings where you all can come and participate and you know, provide your, your vision for that area and what you think the land uses should be and all, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, so keep it keep an eye out for that because you will be starting some of that process. And that could soon. actually impact the letters that you were speaking about earlier. Yeah, we'll probably, as they get close, we'll probably have like a big charrette. I wanted to do it earlier this year, but they did a good job summing it up when we had surf in here. Yeah. So yes, there will, there will be more to it, but as you, everybody just heard, 2024 is the target date for town meeting that we really have to get our act together for and try to do everything we can this year and, and push forward. All right, anything else to add? I think we hit everything on the agenda, so nothing else from the audience? Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Moved by Mr. Dale to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. <laughs> Jerry. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.